I had the privilege to chair two uh, press briefings, uh, one on Friday morning, one on Saturday morning, that were well attended by international press. And we selected there, uh, I would say, the top abstracts to be presented in lay language with a couple of slides. And it's a pleasure for me to, to summarize some of those keynote messages as there was in the first place a groundbreaking randomized phase three clinical trial in multiple myeloma where that was presented by Dr. Dimopoulos, uh, a study where the Pollock study, so to, so to speak, where the new antibody up anti-CD38 that is present on malignant plasma cells was combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone versus lenalidomide dexamethasone as controls. And those were really exciting data with a significantly increased progression-free survival uh, at, uh, in the experimental arm where the antibody is added with 63% uh, uh, less chance of relapsing or progressing. Really, that is, I think it might be A or maybe the standard of care in order for myeloma from now on. Groundbreaking study. It got a place in the presidential symposium because of that reason. Uh, another, uh, another approach is uh, also with an antibody that we call the bite antibodies, the, uh, the, the T-cell engager antibodies that uh, are B-specific. At one end, they bind to uh, an antigen on leukemia cell. We are talking about acute lymphoblastic leukemia here. The other side of the antibody binds to a T-cell. So it brings the T-cell, the the active T cell close, in close contact with the cancer cell, and then the cancer cell is being killed. So this was in a, a study reported by Dr. Top from Germany in heavily pretreated patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. No further treatment available for these patients, and with these infusions of antibody, uh, the overall survival of these patients doubled as compared to patients that did not get the antibody. I mean, they will not be cured, but this is the first step, and now f the next step should be to bring this antibody in an earlier phase of disease to induce a higher cure rate. So I think that was also a very uh, substantial contribution to the, to the field of acute leukemia. Another important issue that's in chronic myelocytic leukemia, a study presented by Dr. Richter, Euroski study as they call it, uh, as you know, chronic myelocytic leukemia, the breakthrough there was a couple of years ago when Gleevec, a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, was introduced. One tablet a day and the disease goes away. I mean, patients uh, that we usually transplanted within the first year after diagnosis with treatment-related mortality of 10, 20, 30 percent, they are now sent home with a recipe and take the pills and the disease goes away and stays away for many, many years. The thing is, patients had to keep taking those pills, and there are, of course, also some side effects. So this was a very informative trial where patients that were long enough in a molecular remission, no signs of disease detectable with the most sensitive assays, stopped the drug and were then followed. So a fraction of patients relapsed then in the time thereafter. They were reintroduced into remission by taking the pills again. But about half of the patients were therapy free and they stayed in a molecular remission. So that is also a step forward. It spares them from taking pills every day and it is also cost effective if you can, after some time, stop the drug. So I think that also was an important message for all CML patients worldwide that are dependent on these uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors.